You know, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there were cowboy television shows, cowboy movies. You couldn't turn a channel. Of course, there were only three channels. But <laughs> you, you couldn't turn the channel without finding cowboys. There were local TV cowboys who hosted cartoon shows. It's, it's hard to find a cowboy. It's hard to find the Wild West anymore. What happened? Well, the thing about those shows, see, I grew up with the same shows. And, uh, uh, you know, every, every red-blooded American boy in the back in the 50s wanted to be a cowboy. Exactly but, right. But one thing we tried to address with this exhibit is very few of those shows and movies actually had anything to do with working cowboys. Mm-hmm. If you think back to them, it was about sheriffs and gunfighters and outlaws and that kind of thing. And uh, that's what we've tried to address with this, this exhibit, uh, the, the working cowboys uh, that are very seldom portrayed in movies. Uh, we have a panel in the exhibit that lists just about a dozen movies that we've come up with yeah. that actually have to do with working cowboys. Actually, I thought about that when I was thinking about the, the, the questions I should ask you, and that came to my mind, that all the, the movies and TV shows, The Rifleman, Gunslinger, right. Gunsmoke, all of them were about sheriffs, about fighting bad guys, about shooting guns, about riding horses, about fighting Native Americans. Right. Nothing about not, – not just very few about punching cowboys. There were a couple of movies about the trail the, – the, what do you call those things? The trail – Trail the, drive. The trail drive. Right. A couple of movies about right. that. Yeah, somehow this idea there's not, not enough drama involved in real cowboy work and, and there's a tremendous amount of drama. What in, is the in, drama in, in it? Robert. Well, if if we look back to the cattle drive days, um, you've got young men and and a few women, not many, but a few. You got young men who are driving thousands of heads of cattle, thousands of miles, mm-hmm. and you want to talk about drama in terms of uh, dealing with the natural environment and dealing with uh, all the trials and tribulations of of such a thing. And uh, you know, this these trail drives actually saved the economy of the U.S. after the Civil War. And so, I mean, there's plenty of drama there. And uh, Tony and I both happen to be fans of a certain miniseries called Lonesome Dove. And if anybody ever proved there's, there's drama yeah. on a cattle drive, it was, it was that miniseries. Now, you are talking uh, at this moment as uh, Steve Watts, but you're, you've come dressed as Cactus Jack. Where did the character come from? Well, I just, uh, we, we sort of, do this sometimes with our exhibits to have some sort of persona to go along with. Uh, Gee, but this persona, you've got a page-long bio here. Well, you know. <laughs> Mike, don't let him fool you. That cowboy hat hasn't just appeared since this exhibit started. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Is this kind of an avocation for you? Well, yeah. You know, it's just just one of a million things that, uh-huh. uh, that I got hooked on as a kid and never got over. I, I'm not right. trying to get over any of them. That's Steve Watts, who, is, who directs the Aboriginal Studies Program at the Shield Museum of Natural History, and also Tony Peso, the head of interpretation there. We're going to take a break and come back with more Charlotte Talks on WFAE.